That was a case, one of these, I've had a lot of them, haven't I? Get sent a script and you go, this is it. I mean, this will never not succeed. This will succeed. Had you watched Cheers? Did you know the character? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. No, I knew who he was. So he, he, that came with the history. You already knew the character. Now, what surprised me is I read the script, and then I met with the guys, and I was thinking because of his character, he'd be and from Boston, he'd, they'd want to set like Murphy Brown. because they, they really hired me because I was doing Murphy, and they really liked the work on Murphy. And I said, so you want a traditional uh, Bostonian, even though he's in, in Seattle, like an old um, Victorian? They said, no. We want you to do the most cutting edge, hip, cool, modern condominium. Well, I went, yes, thank you, God. You know, so then that came from them. And, and they just wanted him in a new setting, a new life, in the greatest looking contemporary apartment I could come up with. And, and uh, off we went. Wendell Johnson worked with me as the art director. He was great. And off we went just with research in Seattle architecture and condos and this and that. And then finally, you, you put it aside. And, you know, I, I just made up that fireplace and those doors and the whole thing and, and uh, did it very quickly. From the time I got the script to the time we filmed the pilot was like three or four weeks. It was an astounding schedule. And so we just plunged ahead. And I've never worried about anything as much in my life because we just did it so quickly. And I remember it all went well, and then David Lee called me one day and goes, oh, one thing we forgot. I said, what? We need a grand piano in the living room. I said, David, <laughs> do you know the, you know, you'll think it out. So that forced me, it was a great thing, to push that room behind the kitchen back. So when you're in the kitchen, you could look through those open shelves to the piano, and it put a nice place. So it just made the set. I mean, it really just was like totally perfect. So that was a case where the producers added something that you first went, oh my God, and then it really added to it. And uh, it just, the show just had a flow and an energy. And uh, Jimmy Co Burroughs walked in, it was a great set. Kelsey walked in and goes, great set. We didn't have to change one thing. It just, the show had a flow. You don't have to change the line of the thing. It just, and it, we just knew this was gonna be, be great. And it was. What kind of budget did you have on that show? You know, we had an ample budget. Fresher, Fresher was a very unique show, and I always told all, all the people who worked with me on it, uh, don't use this as a, as, a, as a template for the future, because I don't remember the word budget ever being discussed on Fraser in 11 years. Uh, they trusted me, you know, and, and I'm working on many shows where we don't talk about budget. They trust that you're not going to do something completely wacko. They know your history is one of being responsible. I'm very responsible to budget. People don't believe me when I say that. They said, oh, you always get all the money in the world. Well, no, you, you don't really. Although I get good budgets on most shows I do, and I keep track of it. I really track the money. And if it looks like it's really going beyond what I think seems reasonable, I'll let the line producer or the producers know, you know, we're in a little trouble. It's really costing a lot more than I would have anticipated. And I found nine out of 10 times, you keep people informed, they will understand and find a way to, to make that to make that work. So when he asked me how much money I had on Frasier, I think the budget, and this was in, in uh, uh, the first year, which was like 13 years ago, it probably was $250,000. Now people get in their heads that this was a million dollar set or something, and, and I don't know where all that happened, probably because I said the wrong thing to someone at some point, but I don't think it was that. I think if you call, I think where that happened is if you put all the cost of all the dressing and all the furniture and all the art and the Chihuly sculpture, which is like $60,000. And if you added all that and the rugs and the artwork, I mean, it may come up to a million dollars. But those were all things that were either lent or rented or pro -am you know, amortized over the series. But I think my working budget to build the architecture and dress it, and it was about $250,000. And, and uh, it, it, it worked. And, and part of it was that big drop outside of the window. That was a good fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000. Had to send a crew up to Seattle, describe the kind of view. They took a lot of Polaroids or digitals, whatever we were doing back 13 years ago. Showed me different views, got with the producers, selected a view, put it in a model at the right scale, and, and uh, had, it, had it, they sent it, then, the, then went back to Seattle, photographed it, sent the thing to Paramount, who processed it, and we didn't know until the day before the show if it was going to be ready and how it would look 
So we had to make these Roman shades on all those big windows that we could drop down for the pilot and not and just see nothing but canvas Roman shades. Wouldn't that have been something? And uh, so it was nice the day of the show or the day before when we could put the backing up and lit it and it looked just beautiful. And you know, so that, that was resolved. But there's always some nail biting and getting all the furniture in the right way, the coffee table made and, and there was so much special stuff that went into that and getting it done in time, like any designer faces, is always kind of nerve wracking. But it happened, and sitting in again, it was one of those sitting in the audience, watching that show unfold for an audience for the first time. And again, the standing ovation, the screaming, the yelling. Now, audiences don't always do that. Uh, they'll give warm response because they don't want the actors and people to feel bad. But you always know when it's like, whoa. You know. So it became a big hit, 11 years.